You're listening to the Telltale Channel. If you like what I do and you want to see me continue to do it, don't forget to check out my Patreon. You can find some ad-free, uncensored, complete versions of my videos on my website, owenmorgan.com. All links are in the description. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming. Got an interesting one today. We're going to be talking about Kenneth Copeland. I <laughs> try not to insult people. But the dude looks like a demon in human skin. I'm sorry. I apologize. So we're going to be talking about this dude and something that he said recently. I'll tell you what. Let's just jump into it. I'll play the, the clip that was the source of this. And then we'll get into what we're going to be talking about here. Check this out. This is, uh, this is from uh, June 8th, 2023. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me uh, change over my audio so that... You guys can hear it too. I okay, there we go. Check this out. It's God, Abram, Abraham. I well, you know, those are two different people, Ab Abram and Abraham, but okay. Isaac, Jacob became Israel. Yep, he's describing early Jewish lore, okay? Jesus and George. Jesus and George, okay. Who's this George fella? This nation, particularly to Christian people, should be completely, totally based on what George Washington said to Jesus. There you go. Wow. Now, there you have it. Kenneth Copeland apparently believes that George Washington had conversations with Jesus, presumably on the regular, and he formed out a new covenant with Yahweh, with God. Uh, now, this is actually a pretty common QAnon belief. I'm surprised to hear it coming out of the mouth of Kenneth Copeland. Uh, not really, or I don't know why I am surprised by it, but... Um, it's a very, very QAnon adjacent belief. And I didn't think that, I thought Kenneth Copeland would be a little bit more coy about his QAnon stuff, right? So the belief is that, uh, you know what? Before we go any further, let me just say, we're going to be playing some Breath of the Wild too. I'm just going to be going around collecting Koroks. I've already hit all the shrines and the dungeons and beat the game already. I'm just getting Koroks. So it'll be in the background if, uh, if you want to watch. Shouldn't bother you too much. So anyways, the, uh, the belief here that Kenneth Copeland is espousing. The belief is that basically um got okay so there are 13 tribes of israel right there's like judah and there's asher and reuben and levi and so on and so forth right 13 tribes of israel uh it was actually the 13 sons of israel it was the sons of this person of jacob and they went on to kind of create like the these different tribes that had different responsibilities within the nation of Israel, like the Levites handled, they were the treasurers, for example, right? Well, here's the belief. The belief is that uh, among conspiracy theorists like QAnoners, like Kenneth Copeland, apparently, and Shane Vaughn and others, the belief is that one of those tribes went over the Caucasus Mountains. They left Israel and went over the Caucasus Mountains and became Caucasians, and eventually got on boats and made their way to America. And when they got here, they made a new covenant with Yahweh, between Yahweh and America. So America is the new Israel, is the belief. It's the claim. Uh, and those Jews that came over the Caucasus Mountains and made the deal with Israel, they were the founding fathers. George Washington, Ben Franklin, so on and so forth. It's nonsense. It is the height of conspiracy theory. I mean, there is absolutely no, there's nothing to back this up. No fact to back this up, right? But they believe it anyways. So 
Kenneth Copeland, that's what he just espoused. He just espoused that conspiracy theory that George Washington spoke with Jesus. Now, here's where QAnon comes into the mix and why this is an integral part of their belief system. This is why QAnon must believe it. QAnon believes Trump to be the Messiah, um, by and large. Anybody who believes Trump to be the new Messiah has to believe that the founding fathers were um, Jews that came over the Caucasus Mountains and blah, blah, blah. And the reason for that is because the Bible mentions the Son of Man in the Old Testament, right? The Son of Man. The Son of Man was supposed to be the Messiah that came along and eventually took political control over the country and sparked Armageddon into being. And everybody speculated that Jesus was the son of man, but he never took political control of Israel and he died. You know, he, he they weren't he wasn't supposed to die. That made no sense to people. He was like I don't understand. Why did Jesus die if he's the son of man? So they said, well, he'll be back. He'll be back. He'll come back. And when he comes back, that's when he'll fulfill his role as the son of man. That was the claim, right? Back in uh, Jesus' day. I hate these puzzles. They drive me absolutely nuts. So anyways, uh, so Jesus was supposed to be the son of man, but he never actually fulfilled that role. We're waiting for him to come back to fulfill the role. That's why people say Jesus will be back. He, that's why he has to come back in the first place, because he didn't take control of the political realm of Israel and then spark Armageddon into being, right? Well, the, the QAnoners that believe that the Founding Fathers were, you know, um, Jews that passed over the... Caucasus Mountains, the QAnoners that believe that, but also believe that this is new Israel, that America is new Israel, and that Trump is the new Messiah because he did take political control over the United States. He took political control over new Israel and is supposed to have gotten two terms because a bunch of the supposed prophets like Kenneth Copeland, not limited to him, but like him, claimed that he would get two terms. Kim Clement is the one usually paraded around by these nutter butters as the guy that prophesied that Trump would get two terms, and he didn't. So they think that, you know, the Democrats must have rigged it. There's no other way that, because I mean, God obviously wanted the Son of Man to be in political control that's only logical right so it must have been given to trump and the democrats did something wrong to mess it up that's the whole belief it's a big convoluted bizarre complex story that you know involves a lot of moving pieces and i'm kind of surprised to hear kenneth copeland espousing it here anyway yeah, let's keep listening to old uh, Kenneth Copeland. See what else he has to say here. Only particularly to Christian people should be completely, totally based on what George Washington said to Jesus. The first act of Congress, number one, the first act of Congress was to enter covenant with the Almighty God based on the book of Genesis. See, there you go. He's, he is describing it there in fewer words because these people already believe it. These people are already, like, sold on this belief system. So he doesn't need to explain any further. So anyways, yeah, that was, that was the clip. Kenneth Copeland effectively uh, espousing QAnon beliefs, right? Well, it, I decided to watch this video that he did. It's on a TV show called Flashpoint. It's on the Victory Network. 
which he owns and operates, um, he's always showing up on the you know on Flashpoint. It's an absolutely unglued from reality TV show that supports Trump to the absolute death. They will do anything for Trump. And I would say that's probably because they believe him to be the Messiah. So anyways, let's listen to Kenneth Copeland on the Victory Network here. He starts out by singing. I'm not going to put you through all that. Yeah, so we're going to skip forward past the singing. <laughs> let's uh, let's give it a listen from, I don't know, roughly right here, I think. Didn't one like it. Oh, no. Get right here. This nation. Very special. Never been one like it. And we're going to talk about that tonight. So I suggest you sit down. We're going to spend some time on this. Okay, let's spend some time on it. By the way, I, I don't think we're going to be able to finish this tonight, like Kenneth Copeland's whole appearance on here. But... If, you know, you want to see the rest of it, just come to my Unfiltered channel. If you're watching it live, then I stream the Unfiltered channel every Wednesday and Thursday morning at uh, 10.30 a.m. If you missed it, don't sweat it. I upload it, you know, edited and cleaned up later on. Um, like, so just go to my unfiltered channel and uh, check around. Just type Kenneth Copeland. It should be near the top. So anyway, yeah, let's uh, let's listen. Oh, my God. If you guys can't see here, I'm going to blow it up for you so you can see it. Hold up. Okay, so somebody has walked out and has some sort of a, but a jacket or something here, right? My God, dude, he took off his suit jacket. He's putting on a Stars and Stripes jacket now. Holy Christ on a cracker. Thou shalt not covet thy brother's jacket. <laughs> no, you, you keep us thy hands off of this. One. <laughs> uh, I don't want anything to do with that jacket, so you're 100% safe. <laughs> Amen. Dude, what? it's kind of a trashy jacket, right? It doesn't really go with the suit at all. And isn't this a complete, like disgrace to the flag wasn't this like illegal at one point wouldn't the founding fathers be like turning in their graves if they saw this i mean I, i'm pretty sure that there were like a ton of rules about how you're supposed to treat the flag uh not laws necessarily in their mind anyways in the founding fathers mind i don't think that any flag really deserves any special treatment or anything personally but he's supposed to think that right isn't he supposed to revere this more than anything or whatever thank you lord jesus i hope you brought your bibles with you tonight if you did uh look on with someone else before i get into this i, I want to read you this 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 is a copy of a letter that was sent to gloria and me from uh, uh, Rose, Weiner, Rob, Rose and Bob Weiner in March of last year. Oh, man, here's the prophetic word the Lord gave me, March 09, which corresponds with your New Year's Eve word. Wait, so he had a prophetic word from God on March 2000, or I'm sorry, March, yeah, is that March 2009? Is that what he's saying? In March of last year, I was with a small prayer group at Harvard after worshiping so and singing in tongues for a long period of time, I had a vision. In this vision, I was above the clouds looking across the expanse of the sky as when flying in an airplane. The sky was filled with bells that were ringing. There were myriads of them. Many of them looked like the Liberty Bell, which has an inscription on it from the book of Leviticus. 
Okay. Uh, is that even true? I, I've learned not to trust a word out of this guy's mouth, but even if it were true, Liberty Bell has an inscription from Leviticus. Okay? So? I, I don't understand. Why does this matter? I saw Jesus walking in the middle of these bells. Then the Lord spoke to me and said, you know, this is the only nation ever founded because people loved me. So, oh God. So this is supposed to be like a, a uh, what would you call it? Like a, a prophecy that God gave Kenneth Copeland, right? God gave Kenneth Copeland this message to give to the rest of the world. And the message included God musing by starting out his prophecy with, you know, you know, this is the first nation that was ever started because you loved me. What? He is desperately trying to establish that this is a Christian nation. I'm sorry. It like it's not. The Founding Fathers were founders of not only America, but of the Enlightenment movement. Enlightenment was the idea that we don't need some religious explanation for anything and that we should be able to logic our way into solutions to problems, basically. Thomas Jefferson is famous for being one of the founders of the Enlightenment movement, among many others. In the history of the world. I founded Israel because I loved people and made them a great nation to bring forth the Messiah, the Savior of the world. But the United States of America was founded because people loved me and sought to create a nation where they could have freedom to worship me. Okay, well, there was worshiping of God going on in England already. It's just, to be fair, you know, they did come over here, a lot of people came over here because they didn't want to be part of the state religion. They wanted to practice their own religion, Puritan nutcases, basically, in all fairness. But really, this country was made for everybody. It's supposed to be a melting pot, right? It's supposed to be made up of people from all backgrounds and lifestyles and everything. And we're supposed to be able to live together in harmony. But, hey, bad kitty, no. Sorry, guys, he's scratching the carpet right next to the scratching post. Instead of the scratching post, he scratches the carpet. He's just a little shithead. Anyway, um... We're supposed to, like, the values that existed when the country was founded were values of equality and sharing and being one. I mean, out of many, one, e pluribus unum, is what's on the money. You know, it's been on the money for a while. But Christian nationalists like Kenneth Copeland and many others, you know, anybody on the Victory Network, Christian nationalists desperately want to rewrite history to make it seem as though the nation was intended to be Christian from the very start. That's simply false. That is a, that is just like retroactively rewriting history. It's nonsense. I will never forget that. And he said this, his voice broke up with emotion. And you could hear what he was holding back the tears. Wait, it, is he telling me that God was breaking up with emotion and holding back tears? Is that what he's saying? I will never forget that. And he said this, his voice broke up with emotion. And you could hear what he was holding back the tears. Then he said, I'm going to move in a great spiritual awakening to call this nation back to myself. Okay, well, that's really interesting because religiosity, belief in religion is dropping through the floor right now. Now, there seems to be like an extreme... Uh, people seem to be polarizing. Either they're 
complete nutcases. They're going down a really, really extreme path. Or they're leaving religion entirely. There's a lot of polarization happening right now. So religion, um, religious observance is dropping through the floor. I, I just don't know what to tell you about that, Kenneth. <clears throat> this is a book of blood covenants. And every time you see the word covenant in it, remember the blood. What a weird thing to say. Like, Jehovah's Witnesses were never into like this whole blood covenant thing and, and obsessed with pleading blood on things and blood covenants, blah, blah, blah. They were never into this. So it's so strange to hear it. It's so weird to hear people talk about blood covenants and all that. Okay, sorry. A blood agreement is the most serious agreement known to mankind. To break it e either means death or exile. That's what happened to Cain. You know what? I don't know if I saved this clip or not, but I have a clip of Kenneth Copeland cutting his hand on film and doing a like a blood agreement with somebody. They both cut their hands and they shook hands afterward. Let me see if I can find Come it. Kim. This is a dangerous mission, but I knew my covenant brother would come. Well, our God is more than enough, Commander Kelly. Yes, he is. Yeah, that's not the one, sorry. <laughs> brother Copeland, I would... Uh, bro uh, to the... You say... When... When... God right... And the... So the... The me... The witness... The... the me... Oh, this is a good one. The media said what? Ha 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 Oops, sorry. <laughs> The media said Joe Biden's president. Ha 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 Okay, yeah. Um, I don't know what that was all about, guys. Okay, I can't find the clip of him, like, cutting his hand, but he has done that before, rest assured. I should find that clip later on. It'll take probably take a while to find, but uh, it is around. It's a weird clip. Because murder was not illegal at that time. Well, hold on. Let's step back a little bit here. E either means death or exile. If you break a blood covenant, I think. That's what happened to Cain. Because murder was not illegal at that time. Right, because there were no laws, I guess. Is that, is that right? No laws? Because there was no government. It was just God. Is that what he's trying to tell us? Now, I want to go to Exodus 2.24. Of the 23rd verse, it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. And the children of Israel sighed by reason of their bondage, and they cried. Their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. God heard their groanings, and, the, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and with Jacob. That didn't mean he forgot it. But somebody's reminding him. Somebody is reminding God of his covenant with a Isaac, Abraham, and Jacob. You know what I've come to notice about televangelists? A lot of the time, 
the things that they say are nonsense. They mean nothing. They are words that individually mean something, but when put together are completely meaningless. They just talk for the sake of talking sometimes, I've noticed. So let's see if we can dissect this and get some meaning out of it. He says that somebody reminded God that there was a covenant. Okay. He's reminding him. Now let's think a minute. Abram, which we'll talk about. You know, well, let's just go there now. Well, I better take this in the order that the Lord gave it to me. See, he has no idea what he's doing. Like, he, he, there is no plan here. He's just kind of like wandering around aimlessly with, with his thoughts, pretty much. And I would be willing to bet that this is going to make absolutely no sense to anybody. But you know what? Kenneth Copeland's famous, and they love Jesus, and they think that he loves Jesus too, so they're going to listen. Let's go to Leviticus 26. And we'll look at the 42nd verse. Verse 40, if they'll confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespasser, which they've trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary to me. And now the 20, 42nd verse, then will I remember my covenant with Jacob and also my covenant with Isaac and also my covenant with Abraham, I will remember, and I will remember the land. Dude, people taking notes on this, do they not realize that he is just speaking complete nonsense, complete meaningless garbage? That this verse, I would be willing to bet, doesn't pertain to the talk that he's about to give at all? That the talk he's about to give doesn't even pertain to the talk he's trying to give? It's complete meaningless drivel. Now, remember, there's blood involved in this. Okay, so what we've learned so far. God made a blood covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to restore, you know, something to Israel, or made a blood covenant with Israel or something or other, okay? The first one in the 15th chapter of Genesis was the blood of animals was the blood of animals, okay. So, and it's a, it's a tremendous thing to read and, and meditate and study. I'm completely convinced that Abram saw God's footprint in the blood of those animals. And I'm sorry, what? Can you repeat that? I'm completely convinced that Abram saw God's footprint in the blood of those animals. In the blood of what animals? I don't understand. You see what I'm talking about? It's like people just come here to listen to him because he's famous and that's it. No other reason needed. He's famous and they're going to listen even though it's complete nonsense. And the way it was done, they were split down the spine and, and let them fall. Talking about get, doing animal sacrifices, I think. Okay. But now notice, I will remember the land. Deuteronomy 4. Wait, what, what does he mean? I will remember the land. What does that have to do with anything at all? Why are we going to another verse? Does he even know what he's talking about? Is he, like, conscious right now? Is he, uh, what's the word? Is he, uh, lucid? Is he sundowning? Seriously, like, what's going on with this guy? He's making absolutely no sense, and nobody is saying a word about it. He's just flipping from verse to verse to verse. None of those verses are connected to each other in any way. He's just going through them just because that seems like the thing to do, apparently. 
and the uh, and 31 for the Lord God is a merciful God he will not forsake thee neither destroy thee oh I'm sorry hopefully that wasn't up for too long apologize about that okay Let me step back. For the Lord God is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of your fathers, which he swore. Did you get that word? Which he swore unto them. That's as strong a language as you can imagine. Okay, I, I suppose. I don't understand what's happening right now, but all right. Then, <clears throat> how do you use this? I learned this years ago. Every prayer must be based solidly on some kind of covenant with God. I had the Lord, Lord say to me, let my word fight its own fight. What does that mean? Let my word fight its own fight? That's just nonsense, right? Is it just me? He said, start with the answer to the prayer. So you have to meditate the word and, and meditate these covenants and find out where that's located. Now, I want you to notice this now. Let's go to 1 Samuel. Dude, nobody in this audience has any clue what he is talking about. I guarantee it. I am genuinely doing my best to understand. And I know this dude's theology maybe better than they do. I know tons of different theologies, probably better than most of the people here. And I have absolutely no clue what this guy is talking about right now but they're just sitting there they're taking notes you know flipping to the verses with him believe they're receiving the word of god you're gonna like this i hope so 17 17 17 what i want you to watch david use this this is the reason that David was a man after God's own heart. Well, we can be too. It should be. I want you to notice this. <clears throat> In the uh, 32nd verse, David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go out and fight this Philistine. Saul said to David, you're not able to go against this Philistine to fight him. Now listen, now listen to the difference between Saul and David. You're but a youth. He's a man of war from his youth. Listen now. David said unto him, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. There came a lion and a bear, took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he rose against me, I caught him by his beard, smote him and killed him. Your servant slew both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine. Okay, that, that was a really weird detail to throw in. Did I miss something? I didn't hear the Bible throw that detail in. Is that a detail that Kenneth Copeland just felt was relevant? That bear didn't have a covenant. That lion didn't have a covenant, but I did. Dude, I think that was just a detail that Copeland got stuck on. And because of my covenant with Almighty God, I had the strength and the power to kill both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine is no different than a lion and a bear, and I'm going to kill him. Dude, people are clapping for this. What is he talking about? What is he talking about? I don't understand. I've been paying attention to this maybe closer than any of these people because I want to know. I want to understand what he's driving at. I want to understand his theology here. 
I have learned absolutely nothing. Am I missing something? Please tell me in the comments or in the chat or whatever. Tell me if I'm just being an idiot and I'm not seeing it here. Somebody clarify. What the hell is this guy talking about? And what are these people clapping for? <laughs> Now we're not done yet. <laughs> Maybe he'll provide more insight, okay? The Philistine said unto David. <clears throat> the uncircumcised one, right? Because that seems to be pretty relevant in Kenneth's <clears throat> Am I a dog that you come to me with staves? The Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, come to me. I'll give your flesh to the fowls of the air and to the breast beast of the field. Listen, David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and a spear with a shield. I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Whoa, now he's invoked the angels into this thing. <laughs> Glory to God. This man knows his covenant with God. Okay, so he prayed to God to help him kill some guy? I feel like this makes no sense whatsoever. Look, I'm looking at a live chat right now. People are saying it makes no sense. It's not just me. But people in the audience are, like, losing it. They're getting excited. They're about to clap. I mean, they've been clapping, right? And they're cheering and yelling and ooh, it's getting real with this Philistine means nothing. Just complete dead silence from the dude for like 10 seconds straight. The God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. Now listen, Mark 11:23. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand. I will smite thee. I'll take your head from you, and I'll give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beast of the earth, that all the earth may know that there's a God in Israel. And all of this assembly shall know that the Lord saves not with the sword nor the spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. It came to pass when the Philistine arose, came David drew to meet David. David ran. He ran towards him. There's no Hollywood jazz. I'm sorry, no Hollywood jazz? Is that what he said? Why are people laughing at this? I honestly think there's something not quite right going on in Kenneth Copeland's mind right now based on what he's saying, seriously. Uh, check this out, hold on. A little while back, Kenneth Copeland, uh, hold on, where is it? Yeah, a little while back, Copeland was talking to his audience. He says this, Years listen old. to this. I'm committed to the Lord to live to be 100 year, 120 years old. Now after that, I'm out of here. <laughs> That'll be December the 6th, 2056. So he, apparently he knows the date of his own death. He's gonna be tw 120 years old and it'll be December 6th, uh, what was, I mean, <laughs> 2026? I mean, he's, he's pretty old now. <laughs> That'll be December the 6th, 2056. 2056 is when he's going to die. Okay. I'm holding you to that, Kenneth. <laughs> you know, if <laughs> if uh, if it doesn't go down like that, then I'm going to think maybe you're a false prophet. Then I began to think about it. Right now, 86 doesn't mean anything. Right. I think he's 86 years old. To the public. But when I'm preaching the word of faith at 90, which is four years away, standing up and not in a chair. 
And there are people get it. I don't want to see what that old man's doing. <laughs> Go there, take a camera down at that church and see what he's doing. Well, it's not that hard to stay super healthy when you are a almost a billionaire. Dude is worth somewhere in the range of $750 million. Now, for the record, I think the average lifespan in the U.S. is 78, maybe, something like that. But just like in, uh, you know, just like 500 years ago, before penicillin existed or, or whatever, before vaccines existed, uh, the average lifespan, average, back then was something like 26. But people were living far past 26. If you made it to 20 or 18 even, you're probably going to live well into your 60s 500 years ago. It was just getting through to, you know, old age that was the problem in the first place. And in a similar way, nowadays, if you make it to 80, you're most likely going to make it longer. People who make it that long are probably have really good health care, probably, you know, have enough money to eat really good, high quality food, have somebody cook for them or cook themselves, never have to worry about scrounging up meals out of nothing, eating ramen noodles 24 seven because that's all they've got, that kind of thing. You got to hate those puzzles. I'm not doing that one. So, yeah, Kenneth Copeland is filthy rich and being filthy rich the way he is, he's probably going to live for a good while longer. Pat Robertson just died at 93 years old, 93 years old. Donald Trump and Joe Biden are both almost 80. I mean, they're almost exactly the same age. There's... A, sh a smaller age difference between Trump and Biden than there is between me and my wife. I think I'm 32 and she's 27 or 28, somewhere in there. Or about to be. Anyway, uh, if you live to be a certain age, you'll probably live to be a lot older than that. I deeply, to the bottom of my heart, doubt Copeland's going to live to be 120 years old, though, the way he claims. And I don't need... Ooh, check out that moon there on the game. That's really pretty, right? And I don't need that to determine if he's a false prophet or not. I already know that he is a false prophet, based on all the other stuff he said. <laughs> See if he's in a wheelchair or what? <laughs> then 95? Yeah. It becomes very interesting. On my 100th birthday, there will be cameras, there will be news media, there will be the whole bunch. And Dude is convinced he's going to live to be 120, no joke. And on his 100th birthday, he's going to blah, blah, blah. Just sad, dude. Here, let's finish it. They're going to get an earful. That's the reason... That, that's the reason I'm, I, I began to get on my treadmill and I heard these words. He said, Kenneth, I sacrificed my body for yours. Now you're sacrificing your body for mine. Yeah. So anyways, yeah, that's uh, Kenneth Copeland saying that he's going to live to be 120 years old. I honestly think there's something not quite right in his brain right now. I think there's something going wrong. I'm not saying that in jest. I'm not saying that to be offensive. I really don't think it, you know, things are quite right. Something not quite right here. He just headed out after him. Sling in hand. Oh, I love him. <clears throat> David put his hand in his bag. He's running now put his hand, hand in his bag, took a stone, slang it, smote the Philistine on his forehead that, he, that the stone sunk into his forehead and he...
I guess he's talking about David and Goliath, right? Fell on his face to the earth. David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling, with a stone, and smote the Philistine and slew him. There was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore he ran, stood on the Philistine, took his sword, drew it out of the sheath, and slew him and cut off his head. Wherewith when the Philistines saw their champion were dead, hey, 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 let's get out of here. One translation said, he took the sword and finished him off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. One, one translation says that he used the sword to, you know, do the final cut, sword of David or whatever. Got like, what a disturbing story, seriously, right? What's even more disturbing to me is the fact that there are genuinely reading this stuff to kids and there really is no purpose to any of it right like there's no like benefit that these kids will get from reading this story of this guy losing his head if, if there was some kind of a an overarching moral value or, or something to this anything at all i would be a little less upset about kids reading it but it, like, it, it provides no value whatsoever. That doesn't mean I want it removed from libraries or anything. I don't think any books should be banned. I'm just saying it's weird. David, I mean, this thing's got to be big as a basketball. And he got it up here like this. I mean, there's just teeth, hair, and eyeballs all over everything. <laughs> Why is he being... So grass. He took the head of the Philistine, brought it to Jerusalem, and he put his armor in his tent. He's a teenage boy. He put it in his room. I guess. Okay, how does this relate to anything? Wasn't he supposed to be giving us some story at the beginning of this? Wasn't there some overarching point he was driving at originally? What was he even talking about originally? I don't remember now. Now he's just like laughing about some dude getting his head cut off? What the hell? I guess he went, <laughs> you know, I'm just supposing here, he went and said, well, here, take the head. Mama won't let me keep this. So I, <laughs> I'm just going <laughs> to What's the point here? Dude's laughing about this. This is like disgusting. Grotesque is actually the probably the, the most correct word here. But I get the armor. <laughs> the Lord asked me years ago. He said, who made David king? I said, Samuel. He said, no, Goliath. He said, he's my man. And he knew his covenant. And he knew how to use Oh, that's right. We were talking about blood covenants. I totally forgot what we were even on about. This dude was just going off on a weird tangent about Goliath losing his head. Like, what the hell? Now, what was the Ark of the Covenant? It was a box that contained a whole bunch of stuff, supposedly. My brother and sister, this is big stuff. Not, I mean, it would be big stuff if it made any sense at all. The problem that we've had with the standard version is the word testaments. So, when you read these scriptures, read them in the classic Amplified. Now, Dude, I, I, I'm so lost again. What is he even talking about? Read it in the classic Amplified. Amplified version is a version of the Bible that they like to switch between. So if there's one version of the Bible that fits their interests or needs better than another, they'll use that translation instead. Kind of interesting, right? Uh, they used the Amplified version of the Bible a little while back to establish that Trump was somebody special because the Amplified Version said God will protect us from fraud uh, when no other version says that. 
and Trump was talking about fraud nonstop at the time. And they used that as a premise to claim that Trump is special or whatever. Uh, you should use a single version of the Bible. You should not switch between versions that are more convenient for you, seems to me. That's, that's just me. Turn. So we're going to leave the first covenant and go to the second, to the book of Ephesians. And this is a huge, huge problem. In the second chapter, the 11th verse, I'll read the 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Remember, you being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands at that time. At what time? You were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, and I put in there, strangers from the blood covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Okay, none of that made any sense to me. I'm sorry. I feel like it made sense to him at one time years and years ago. And now he saw his notes in there and knows that it's relevant for something, but has no idea what. This is just nonsensical garbage, right? Is it just me? And for what it's worth, I, I just want to point out, uh, circumcision is not necessary to be a Christian anymore. Um, in fact, uh, it's actually banned. If you are circumcised, you have to follow the whole law, all of it, in all 613 commandments, according to uh, Galatians 5, 3, I think, or 5, 5. Well, Galatians chapter 5, anyways. You have to follow the whole law. Um, Christians stopped doing that a long, long time ago. Do you know why they continued doing it or why we do it in the U.S. now? so much because of the guy that invented Kellogg's cornflakes Kellogg himself was obsessed with making sure that nobody enjoyed sleeping with each other and no kid did anything nefarious alone if you know what I mean so he wanted to make it an extremely painful experience to you know do things yourself if you will Another solution, aside from circumcision, was also running a metal wire through it to prevent the kid from whatever, you know? How whacked out is that shit? Seriously. Please don't do that to your kids. Well, brother, I plead the blood. On what? Well, it works. On your mother. Oops, sorry. I'm going somewhere with this, so. Okay, well, I'm waiting. I've been waiting this whole time. Please, any minute now. <laughs> <clears throat> it seems like he's aware that he's making absolutely no sense whatsoever, right? It does. It works. Yes. What works? What's he talking about right now? And the Apostle Paul said to have faith in the blood. Yes. Of what? All right. I do, what are they laughing at? I don't understand. I am so lost. Nothing about this made any sense except that these people view him as a celebrity and are just blown away by the fact that they're hearing his preaching. They believe him to be some prophetic special guy that speaks to God directly because they believe in prosperity gospel. And prosperity gospel says the richer you are, the closer you are to God, the more God loves you to bless you with money. That's their belief, really. Now you remember, <clears throat> both Moses 
And, the, and, and Peter the apostle said, a day with God is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as a day. Yeah, that's a verse Jehovah's Witnesses use all the time to, you know, work into their Bible math. It's complicated. The day <clears throat> was April the 30th, 1789. This was a day of making covenant with Almighty God for the United States of America. Remember all that stuff I said at the beginning about George Washington being one of the found, or be, you know, he's a founding father, being a Jewish person. Remember? Copeland believes that the founding fathers were really Jewish people, and this is new Israel and all that. Now he's getting into it. A proclamation that was made for the sacred gathering at Federal Hall. Come and see your president take his oath and pray that God will accept this land as his. 234 years, that's 15 minutes ago to God. He's waiting for somebody to use this. Waiting for somebody to use what? Now let's turn to the 17th chapter of Genesis. Dude, I, don't, I feel like I didn't learn anything from what he said. I didn't learn anything from the verses that he's already quoted. I, I'm just so lost. At 9 a.m., the bells rang throughout the city. George Washington made his official oath of office in New York City. He laid his hands on the Bible, the 17th chapter of Genesis, specifically opened it up on the covenant of God made with Abraham. All right, let's go to the covenant of God. Okay, I, I don't even know. I, that does not sound true to me. I don't know if that's true or not. It's really hard to know if anything that these people say is true. There's a painting that's, that circulates a lot of George Washington kneeling down and praying in front of uh, some chapel or something with his horse. That painting is, well, it's a real painting, but it's not depicting a real situation. That, that scene never took place, George Washington kneeling in front of a horse praying like that. Uh, yeah, but, you know, it's like part of their lore. Like, these people believe that that was the moment that, you know, uh, George Washington made this covenant between New Israel, a.k.a. America, and God. It never happened, but it's part of their lore anyways. God made by Abraham. Sorry, let me step back Abraham. here. All right, let's go to the covenant of God made by Abraham. I guess he's trying to, like, make it out as though... Or he's trying to compare the United States and the idea that we have a covenant with Yahweh with the covenant that Abraham has with Yahweh, or had, before America came along. What a confusing, jumbled train wreck of a belief system this is, right? When Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. I am El, God, Shaddai. I am the God who's more than enough. This, this refers to a nurse a mother nursing a child. Uh, how? There was a time when Gloria, his wife, was everything to Kelly. She was the oldest. And then she's everything to John. She was their food. She, she could understand them when I have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> Well, maybe you need to be around your kids a little bit more often and you would understand what they were talking about. You know, kids may not be able to fully speak 
English yet, but you can understand what they want and need and what they're asking for and what they're trying to tell you and stuff if you're around them enough. Kenneth Copeland, you know, of course, presumably is not around his kids enough. Presumably doesn't really care. I mean, he kind of told on himself here, didn't he? Why? She lived with them day and night. But you didn't? And then while I was in class at ORU, they were there at home. And so she was with those children all the time, seeing to their every need. That's what he just said to Abram. Walk before me and be blameless. Sorry, guys. Fix that. Walk before me and be blameless. I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. Abram fell on his face and God talked with him saying, as for me, he didn't have to take it. As for me, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall your name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. Dude, I don't, I'm sorry, man. I am lost. What are you even talking about right now? And why do I care? What does this have to do with anything at all? He changed his name. The H in the middle of his name is Hashem. It is the H in yod Hey vav Hey. For a father of many nations have I made thee. I will make thee exceeding fruitful. I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and seed after thee for their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee. I will give unto thee the seed after thee, the land. You'll keep my covenant. You shall, listen, this is my covenant, which you shall keep between me and you and your seed after you. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Yeah, that's the old covenant. That whole circumcision thing, that's the old covenant. We don't have to do that anymore. It was done away with when Jesus, whatever, came back and fulfilled the law or whatever else. It's irrelevant now. In fact, Paul was so averse to it that he said, if anybody is circumcised, then they must fulfill like all the expectations of the law, all 613 commandments. Seriously, look it up. You're not supposed to be circumcised now, according to the Bible. Mordecai Phaeus, thank you so much. Or, I'm sorry, Mordecai Phaeus, thank you for the... Uh, for the, uh, super chat or the, uh, yeah, I guess just the, yeah, the super chat, I guess is what it, but there's no chat with it. So just the super I appreciate it. I want to make sure I didn't miss any. Have I missed any? I don't believe I have, but I like refreshed my screen and I'm not sure now. Just let me know if I missed something. And you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin and it'll be a token of the covenant between you and me. Blood. Yeah, Old Testament. Blood was shed. A man's blood. For a special child. That's where George Washington turned. Remember, he thinks George Washington is like a Jewish person or whatever. Now notice what he said. And he talked to him about the nation. Talk to him about the nation. Talk to who about the nation? Is he saying that Abraham talked to God about the nation of Israel? Okay. 
So, Abraham, Isaac, a special child. Then, Jacob. Another name change. It is not the state of Jacob. It is the state of Israel. Right. It, yeah. So Jacob got his name changed to Israel. They're like, that's the lore. Yes. Everybody knows the lore. We're all aware. What's your point? He went through a process to get it. Amen. And then another special child was born. Circumcised on the eighth day. Dude, this guy has some weird obsession with this. Why is this like all you think about? Now, what you have to remember, all, all of that was pointing at him to get him in here. Amen. All was pointing at who to get him in here? What are you talking about, Kenny? All of these blood covenants, sworn oaths. The thing that the Lord laid on my heart and has, and has had for a number of years, and of course, you could just come to KCBC and learn all this. Uh, Kenneth Copeland, KCBC. Kenneth Copeland broadcasting something? I'm not sure what KCBC stands for. Somebody give me some insight. <laughs> he's flipping through his book because he's got some more to say, apparently. Okay. Washington invoked his oath and covenant under the Lord and sealed it with, so help me God. He bowed his knee to the ground in reverence and kissed the Bible. Afterward, Washington called the senators and newly elected officials to join him. Dude, he's not reading from the Bible. What is he reading from right now? Is this like some kind of a history book of some sort? And they sort? walked arm in arm down the streets of New York City's chapel. There they bowed together prayed and dedicated this land, our beloved America, to God. The day that George Washington was inaugurated, this was the day covenant was invoked. America belong to God Almighty. Oh, dude, this is fascinating. Oh, oh, okay, I have to write this down. I got to write this down. 50, 23. Give me a second here. I'm going to write this down. 50 minutes, 23 seconds into this thing. Okay. George Washington Covenant. Where go? This is so clearly outlining the belief. I'm honestly like, usually they're a lot more coy about their belief system when it comes to this stuff. They won't come out and say this stuff because saying this means that they believe that Trump is the Messiah. If they believe that like this is new Israel or whatever, effectively it means Trump's the new Messiah. So it's kind of a big deal that he's saying this. Fascinating. And everybody's cheering for it. Are they aware of the implications, I wonder? Hallelujah! I mean, nothing that the dude just said added up to anything at all. He, his whole talk was nonsense. But... He says, you know, this is new Israel. God has a covenant with America and it gets collapsed no matter what came before it or what comes after it. Now. I mean, he's wearing a stars and stripes jacket and the people in the audience are waving flags around like that is completely like there is no separation between church and state anymore for all intents and purposes they're the same thing at this point 
or that's what Copeland is aiming for at the very least. I pray for my partners every meal. Partners are are people who donate to him, donators uh, of any amount. All over the world. But when I pray for this nation, I say, Lord, remember your covenant. So, Abram, who became Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, who became Israel, Jesus. So, <laughs> and God is the author of this. The good God. Okay. So, it's God, Abram, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob became Israel. Dude, is he just like repeating himself right now? Is he just saying the same exact thing over and over and over again? It sounds like it. Jesus and George. <laughs> right, so this is where, this was our opening clip. He called George Washington basically one of the prophets or one of the, the the important people to history to God or whatever right and that lays foundation for Trump to be the Messiah here's the point <clears throat> God are we getting to the point finally how many we're 50 something minutes in now we're getting to the point okay First covenants count because everything else is based on that. The nation of Israel is based on what God said to Abraham. And the whole nation is based on it. This nation, particularly to Christian people, should be completely totally based on what George Washington said to Jesus. Okay, and what did George Washington say to Jesus? The first act of Congress, number one, the first act of Congress was to enter covenant with the Almighty God based on the book of Genesis. Well, hang on now. I'm curious. What was the first act of Congress? The first act of Congress is 1789, I think, is when the uh, Constitution was ratified. But there was a Continental Congress before that. Um, I do solemnly swear to support the Constitution of the U.S. Uh, oh, okay. So the first, the thing, the first thing that was passed, the first bill, the Senate passed its first bill in 1789, May 5th. The Oath Act, the first oath for members and civil servants was very simple. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That was the first act, actually, of Congress. Kenneth Copeland Bible College, okay. Oh, is that what that is? KCBC, okay, that makes more sense. Thank you for clarifying that. Now, the prayers that were prayed... Now, I have, I have these, these, these prayers. Some were prayed that day. There's one in here that, that was according to something like six years earlier, but they are the prayers of Washington. So listen to this. Okay, I don't know that we have any recorded copies of any prayers that George Washington gave. Uh, that, you know, that sounds pretty far-fetched to me. I know Washington was not like a particularly religious person to my knowledge, but okay. Um, I suppose I will bear with him. Go ahead. Almighty God, 
We make our earnest prayer that thou will keep the United States in holy protection. Thou will incline the hearts of the citizens to cultivate a spirit of subordination and obedience to government. And entertain a brotherly affection and love for one another and for their fellow citizens of the United States at large, particularly for their brethren who have served in the field. And finally, that thou will most graciously be pleased to dispose us all to do justice, to love mercy, to demean ourselves with that charity, humility, and pacific, pacific temper of mind, which were the characteristics of the divine author of our blessed religion. And without a humble imitation of those examples and those things, we never hope to be a happy nation. Grant our supplication, we beseech thee through Jesus Christ our Lord. Why not pray that in church? Because I don't feel like that makes much sense. I I'm not sure what he's trying to communicate with that. Did, is that even like one of Washington's prayers? Honestly, I doubt it. I seriously doubt it. Do we even have any of, wa of George Washington's prayers? I have no clue. I I'm very skeptical. We could set ourselves in agreement with that when you pray for the nation. The first president prayed that. Mm. And now, Almighty Father, if it is thy holy will that we shall obtain a place and a name among the nations of the earth, grant that we may be able to show our gratitude for your goodness by our endeavors to fear and obey thee. Bless us with thy wisdom in our counsels, success in battle, that our victories be tempered with humanity, Endow also our enemies with enlightened minds that they may become sensible of their injustice, willing to restore our liberty and peace. Grant the petition of thy servant for the sake of whom thou hast called, thy beloved son. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Okay, I don't know what any of that means, except I did capture uh, one little thing in there. Did you guys notice him pray for like a swift death to their enemies, basically? How psychotic is it to pray for, like, your victory in a war? Seriously. You're praying to God to allow you to, like, kill other people. What? I mean, I don't even know if this is, like, Washington's prayer. This could be completely made up. But either way, that is psychotic. That. There's another note. Very interesting. When Ronald Reagan took the oath of office, he turned it to the 17th chapter of Genesis. Again, don't believe a word out of his mouth. Kenneth Copeland basically lies for a living. Completely untrustworthy person, so be skeptical about everything. But uh, yeah, okay. And I'm, I'm just satisfied knowing him. He got it from George Washington. He got it from George Washington. First president, first Congress, first covenant, first act of government. Yeah, completely made up. First act of government was the Oath Act. Was to enter into a divine covenant with the Almighty God. Genesis 6, 3, the days of man shall be 120 years. So you come down to Psalm 91 with long life. Well, we don't have any right to just pick what long life is because God said it was 120 years. Ooh, interesting. So you remember earlier, I like showed a video of Copeland saying he believed he's going to live to be 120. Does this like tie back to that? It seems like it does. This is fascinating, actually. Bet Copeland dreamt the the ghost of, or dreamt the ghost of Washington. Oh, I'm sure Copeland's had all kinds of weird dreams. I'm sure of it. <laughs> anyway, I'll tell you what, guys. I'm gonna get out of here. Appreciate you guys hanging out with me. If you want to see more of this, I'm finishing it tomorrow morning, uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays, 10:30 a.m. If you guys want to come hang out with me. It'll be fun. Uh, I 
do all kinds of stuff. I watch stuff like this. I read extremist books. That kind of thing is pretty good. So, yeah, come hang out with me there. Um, Wednesday and Thursday mornings, 1030 a.m. I'd appreciate that. Anyway, yeah, uh, thank you guys so much for coming, and I will talk to you guys hopefully tomorrow morning. If not, I will talk to you guys next week, okay? All right, have a good one, everybody. That's all I've got for you. If you like what I do and you want to see me continue to do it, don't forget to check me out on Patreon. And take a look at my YouTube channels. Owen Morgan, where I talk about religious issues. Telltale Fireside Chat, where I talk about politics. Telltale Unfiltered, where I do long-form breakdowns of stuff like this. And Telltale Reads, where I read books by televangelists and others. I release everything in parts, but every part stands independently of the last. So you can jump in anywhere, and I'll make sure it makes sense. You can find some ad-free, uncensored, complete versions of all my videos on my website, owenmorgan.com. And while you're there, don't forget to sign up for my email list to get early access to everything. All links are in the description. Okay, thanks for watching, guys.